This is not a list of Christmas items that's going to get you $20, $40, $50. This is a list of Christmas items that is going to net you thousands of dollars if you find these items. And many of them are sleeper items that could be on the shelf at your thrift store right now. You just don't know about them, but you're about to. <laughs> welcome back to the channel or if you're new here welcome my name is rachel strickland and i quit my full-time job to pursue full-time online reselling on ebay poshmark whatnot i buy and sell vintage items hard to find things things they're not making anymore and I've turned it into my full-time income to help support my family. Here on this YouTube channel, I document every step along the way, the good, the bad, and the ugly to show you how to find the same financial freedom and freedom in your time buying and selling vintage online. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, and I hope that it is, be sure to click the subscribe button so you don't miss future videos. And if you like this video, like this video. Let's get straight into the Christmas bolos. The first Christmas bolo on my list today are Christopher Radko ornaments. Christopher Radko does make a lot of things other than just ornaments but the ornaments are the major bolo and where it's at don't get me wrong some of that hand-painted artwork can go for several hundred dollars but with these ornaments we're talking several thousand if you find the right ornament I've been blessed to sell Christopher Radko and I think the most expensive one I've sold was maybe $270 for a tree topper. I want to say I paid $10 or $15 for that tree topper at an estate sale. So selling it for well over $200, closer to $300 is insane to me. But when I found these Christopher Radko ornaments, I was blown away. This one is called the Fruits of Neptune and I saw it several times. You're not going to believe this price. 14 bids at $2,175 plus shipping. This one is extra special and sold at over $1,600. Here's another of that Fruits of Neptune that sold for $1,200. Maybe they could have got more like that first one. And there must have been an entire space theme because this one is the Moons of Octar. It's a 2001 ornament and it sold for $1,602. The 12 Days of Christmas collection by Christopher Radko is also super important and hard to find. This one sold for $1,300, guys. So keep your eyes peeled for Christopher Radko ornaments. I will insert here for you guys what the top of those ornaments look like, but there are some older vintage styles that don't feature this Christmas tree. So just be sure that you look for Radko anywhere on that ornament, especially the metal top. While we're on the topic of ornaments, what list would be complete without shiny brights? Shiny brights are a major bolo and they're on a lot of resellers list, but most of them don't go for that much money. I mean, you could get 20, 30, maybe even $60 for the right ornament or the right bundle. However, there are a few shiny bright designs that can really rake in the dough. And their stellar sell-through rate is definitely worth mentioning. There are currently 15,000 listed and 9,000 sold. While many of these shiny bright styles can rake in, again, $20, $40, that's nothing to sneeze at considering a lot of these can be found at thrift stores and people are just casting them aside. It's so sad save the vintage there are certain shiny bright styles that you might not even notice or you might not notice as a shiny bright because they're not so shiny or bright and that brings me to unsilvered Christmas ornaments take a look at this lot of ornaments that sold for $400 many collectors would not have recognized these as shiny bright we all know that during World War II metal was at a premium and a lot of luxury or non necessity items just simply could not be used out of metal shiny bright was no exception and the metallic paint or lacquer that went inside of these ornaments could not be used for that purpose during this time so that is why these ornaments and many other brands just like them are affectionately referred to as unsilvered there is no silver coating inside you can see right through the ornaments and those are world war ii era unsilvered christmas ornaments they can go for a lot of money the silver lining inside ornaments is not the only place that we see metal in vintage christmas ornaments the top Tops of these ornaments were metal as well and you guessed it again during World War II they could not be made out of metal so if you see vintage ornaments like these that have a paper top and we're talking it looks like a heavy cardstock something that's durable but clearly not metal and it is cardboard or it is paperboard those are worth a lot of money be sure to investigate all the ornaments that you're finding at thrift stores this time of year because I feel like if I saw these at a distance I would assume that that was a plastic 
plastic top and it's not, it is worth so much money, you guys. There are other shiny bright styles that can sell for a lot of money. Check out all of these really fun shapes. The basic shiny bright style, the spheres, um, again, they are great bread and butter bolo items, but the unique sizes and shapes like these can command a pretty penny. Check out this one ornament that sold for $225. It was a store display, which leads me to believe that this thing must have been huge, gigantic ornament. It was only four and a half inches wide. In the description of this listing, the seller says that he got it from his aunt's estate and she had included in there that it was once upon a time a store display which fetched $225 for this one ornament. I can't even imagine tuning into a Christmas bolo list and not seeing the Evergleam Christmas tree or a tree a similar style. Evergleam is a brand of this tree but any of the aluminum trees with this style branches more made of tinsel than anything else are huge money makers. On average I'm seeing these trees sell between $250 and $500 depending on what size you can find and what size you're selling. I have seen these anywhere from two foot tall trees to nine foot tall trees. There's even a listing where someone is making the holders for the branches and selling those on eBay. While they look a little Charlie Brown, these Evergleam trees are huge to collectors. Everyone is looking for them. If you find one, get that thing listed regardless of whether or not it's even around Christmas time. I promise you're going to receive a good payday off of that. That one. But wait, there's there's more to that story though. While I was searching the Evergleam tree, I came across some that were either uniquely colored or had unique colored tinsel balls on the branches. If $250 to $500 was not enough for an Evergleam tree, check this out. That's right, that is not a typo. $17,000 for that first one that is a blue and purple and immediately $10,000 for the one below with blue tips on the branches. We're talking $46 dollars for one with red on the branches. The ones that are colorful will command thousands of dollars. So if you do find an Evergleam tree, set it up, make sure you know what it is that you're selling, get that thing out of the box, take really good pictures, and cash in for Christmas. Let's pause and thank the sponsor of today's video, and that is Vendu. I've been using Vendu for several months now and am really enjoying the ability to cross list my items pretty effortlessly. I've told you in videos in the past that I actually cross list either standing in line at the thrift store or from the car in my child's pickup line like while we're parked and just waiting on the kids. It is that easy to cross list from your phone because Vendu has an app. They are truly a cross-listing service that is listened to resellers and the things that resellers want and need in a cross-lister. One of those things is an automatic delister. So say my item is cross-listed on both eBay and Poshmark. When the item sells on eBay, Vendu is gonna automatically take it off of Poshmark and prevent the mistake I would have made in selling that item twice. Vendu also helps consolidate things because they have a background remover built into their app. So if you are listing directly to Vendu and then cross-listing out to all of your marketplaces, as soon as you upload those photos, you can remove the background for a very professional and streamlined look because we know that that is what the algorithms and what especially Google loves to search is a plain white background. Vendu answered us there as well. A brand new development over at Vendu is that that auto sales detection and deletion is now available on Mercari also. Whether you sell on eBay, Poshmark, Mercari, Etsy, Depop, Grailed, Kittison, Shopify, even Vestair Collective is is now on Vendu. Vendu is helping expose your items to more marketplaces than ever, and we all know more eyes on the item means a buyer faster. While sourcing is fun, selling is the name of the game, and Vendu seems to be pulling out all of the stops to ensure that we can do just that. Are you aware that Vendu has a free plan? If you've been curious and you're just not sure if Vendu is right for you, I have a link down below. You can sign up with that link and receive the discount, or you could sign up and try Vendu for free. The only thing it'll cost is a little time and Vendu is going to save you that in the long run. One country's products that are unanimous with quality is Germany and Vintage Christmas is no exception. Anytime I find Christmas decorations that are made in Germany, I'm going to scoop those things out and comp it out later. Remember the Halloween video where we talked about paper mache, jack-o'-lanterns, and pumpkins? We talked about lots of vintage paper craft Halloween decorations. Well, Christmas is no exception and if you find vintage paper dress, Dresden ornaments. 
start planning your Christmas vacation now because those will make you a ton of money. This vintage Dresden elephant sold for $4,800. This rare antique Dresden uh, horse and carriage is $4,000, you guys. The rooster head, $3,800. I clicked on a lot of these photos to see how can we tell that it's Dresden, what marks do we look for, and look, guys, if you find something like this, again, pick it up and you can comp it out later, especially if the price is right, because if a paper ornament, this is the bottom of the elephant. You can tell it's just put together with pressed paper. If this came through my thrift store, I'm willing to bet no one there would understand the value and this thing would probably get priced in a bag for $2 for the entire bag, but it sold for $4,800. Here's a look at a ship that also sold. You can see just the seams. These are truly made out of like a pressed cardboard, essentially a pressed paperboard. Pick them up. They may be Dresden and they may be an extremely great sale for you. Another thing that vintage Halloween and vintage Christmas sharing common are blow molds. Who doesn't love a vintage Christmas blow mold? My biggest problem when I find those is that I want to keep them all. Currently I have some vintage candles as well as an all white nativity set. Now I picked those up for like $12 I think for the entire nativity and then maybe it was 10 or 12 dollars for both of the vintage candlesticks if you're not like me and you can part with those you should because they can really command again a great payday for you by far the best selling one i've been able to find on ebay over and over again is santa and his reindeer if you can find them all this one sold for three thousand dollars this one with just the reindeer sold for twenty two hundred dollars and here's one for fifteen hundred dollars they consistently sell for anywhere from fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars for the set. Another huge blow mold money maker is a full nativity. Check this one out. $1,400 for all of the pieces. $1,200 for a 12 piece nativity. They took a best offer off of $1,100 for this one. Santa and the nativity. Those over and over again were the biggest money maker blow mold comps for all of the vintage Christmas on eBay. Another style that I saw repeated as a huge money maker were these ornaments. There were several different brands but Becco was a good brand 31 inch tall scenic ornament sold for $700 here is a pair that sold for $600 if it's unique or unusual and it's a blow mold definitely look it up even if it seems common to you because perhaps it's a beloved cartoon like Mac from the Grinch here. He sold for $650, you guys. Look all the bowl molds up. Some of them can be $100, but some of them can be $1,000. You'll be glad that you checked out the comps on those. If you don't know what to call the particular blow mold, use Google Lens and take a picture of it. Google is gonna search the entire internet for photos like yours, and they are going to locate those good eBay photos, which will take you to the listings. Now that listing is just for sale, so it may go to like a $20,000 listing. That doesn't necessarily mean that's what your item is worth, but it is going to give you good keywords in that title to search the rest of eBay. So suppose I didn't know that dog's name or I didn't know he was from the Grinch. When the listing gets pulled up, I'm going to see that his name is Max and he's from the Grinch. So I can now type into eBay Max Grinch blow mold and now I can filter by soul and see what he's actually selling for. So don't trust the listed comps that you're going to find with Google Lens, but definitely trust the keywords. Google Lens is not to comp things out. It is to help you identify something so that you can go do the legwork and go to eBay using those keywords, using the now identifying terms and comp that item out. How many of you guys would take a second peek at something like this? Many of you collectors already know what this is, but if you don't, this is the turning light that lights up the Evergleam tree that we spoke about earlier. And just the rotating light here that goes at the base of the tree can sell for $800. These aluminum rotating lights from the 60s have probably been reproduced but nothing replaces the original here's one for six hundred dollars a second for six hundred dollars it is clear nothing will ever replace the love and affection we have for true vintage at Christmas time but if you live in an area where vintage is harder to find I've got news for you I have got good news for you because this next category 
jewelry isn't really vintage. It kind of shocked me a bit. It is the other niche that I love to sell in and that is designer. And we're not talking heavy designer. This is not Versace. This is not Gucci. This is not even Dior. We're talking anthropology and their Christmas stockings. If you spot one, buy it. This set of two anthropology stockings, $406.60. It was not a fluke. They are not alone. Here is a set of three sold for $378.10. A set of two for $300. If your thrift store is anything like mine, stockings are in a bin at the end of the Christmas aisle and they're like 50 cents, 25 cents sometimes a dollar if the style is super fancy if I knew I could flip that into a hundred and fifty three hundred dollars for a stocking you better believe I'm going through that bin every time look in those little nooks and crannies of the thrift store places that other people might not be looking these are not vintage stockings they're pretty non-assuming I would imagine they feel very quality when you touch them when you pick them up so turn those stockings inside out, look for tags. How many of you would even look twice at a stocking like this? Let me just expand the image and show you that this Ralph Lauren stocking sold for $289. Here's a Pottery Barn one, again of Max from the Grinch. He seems to be pretty beloved on this Bolo list, $250. They did take a best offer, but being Pottery Barn, I bet it was pretty close to that list price. Recently at an estate sale, I came across an entire collection of Department 56 houses and I had to buy the entire collection. I paid $50. I've sold all but two of those houses so far for anywhere from $20 to $40 a piece. I'm definitely making good money, but it's not what some Department 56 can make you because while the bulk of them are worth $20 to $40, don't get too excited every time you find a Department 56. Some of them can bring you a lot more money than that. And one of the Christmas collections to look for is the Christmas Vacation Collection from the Bolivia movie Christmas Vacation, specifically Shirley the Boss's house. Look, look at this. Shirley the Boss's house. They took a best offer off of $3,000. Who knows? They probably got closer to $2,000, I'm willing to bet. But these auctions ended 14 bids for $1,829, and another took a best offer off of $1,750. The collaborations with Department 56 at Christmas time seem to be where the money is at. This Christmas story uh, steam car sold for $1,100. The Jimmy Buffett style are doing exceptionally well this year um, as to be expected with his recent passing $1,400 for this little Jimmy Buffett shack and here is another from a Christmas story uh, $1,000 for the leg lamp factory that is a really cool piece. Here are a few more Christmas vacation pieces right around again a thousand dollars. It just it blows my mind what some people will pay for these tiny little pieces of ceramic but I will comp them out every time I see them. Just turn those Christmas houses on the bottom. Look for department 56 to be splattered across the bottom. Again use Google Lens if you're not sure where exactly it's from. If it's not stamped uh, identify it and then run to eBay and comp that thing out. While we're talking about National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation I'm gonna Gonna encourage you to comp out just about anything you see with a collaboration from that franchise. I found many of the advent calendars listed or sold on eBay right around a thousand dollars. We're talking twelve hundred dollars, a best offer off of twelve fifty, eight bids at just over a thousand dollars for that little advent calendar they show in the movie when they're opening all the windows. If you find that that one is a huge money maker, guys. The value of a National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation collaboration just continues on into Hallmark. Here's Cousin Eddie's RV comping out at almost $500 for an ornament. We are getting our outdoor Christmas decorations up this week and I just can't wait. There is something about blow molds and huge tacky Christmas inflatables that just makes my heart sing. And, and icicle lights, I like those too. But Christmas inflatables, if you find any of them, comp them out. Oftentimes these only run for one year at a time. The manufacturers will run with a different franchise or a different style next year, leaving them very very limited edition. It's rare that you see the same blow molds repeated on store shelves year after year. 
The manufacturer has to do something to get you to want the next best thing. So even if you find little Disney inflatables, the box says $19, run an eBay comp because that could be last year or several years ago model and Mickey or Minnie may be worth a lot more than that now. Here are a few Christmas inflatables that I simply could not believe the price on. Many of these are 26, 30 foot tall. If you see something that huge, looks like it could be at a car dealership, definitely pick that up or comp it out. Make sure that the price is right. Anything unique or rare like a human sized snow globe or a carousel or anything with the gimme jimmy someone in the comments tell me exactly how i'm supposed to pronounce that g-e-m-m-y that brand i'm seeing over and over again on the very high priced christmas inflatables that sold i only have two items left on my list you're gonna be sad when this is over i hope you're taking notes this is a great time to ask you to subscribe and like this video if you've learned anything again my point and purpose of this channel is to educate people about about how to resell so you can get away from asking permission to take a day off take a bathroom break asking permission to live your life while you're employed uh, by someone else and you can be your own boss if, so if I've educated you in any way in this video please like and consider subscribing there are two vintage uh, Christmas items that I absolutely love to see and that is dancing Santa's and knee hugging elves call it the original elf on the shelf if you like but these knee huggers are definitely raking in the dough on eBay and other reselling sites at Christmas time. Here is a lot of knee hugging elves. There were 33 bids and it sold for $373.88. That's crazy. But if you can find the knee huggers that are not elves or that have some unique spin to those, you can sell them individually for almost that amount of money. Check out these two knee hugging snowmen, $249 for these. Here is a Santa and Mrs. Claus. It looks like they took a best offer from $229. And these big headed elves sold together for $210. Again, there was just something a little more unique. They're enlarged craniums in this case. And this one is pretty unique in that the knee hugger elf has devil horns. They took a best offer off of $149 for this one. If you see any that again are unique or look like they could be rare, you are probably looking at over $100 for the single knee hugger at Christmas time. Another good keyword to use when you're listing your knee hugger elf is the word pixie. Be sure to include that because a lot of collectors will search for knee hugger pixies or maybe just Christmas pixies. Recently at an estate sale, I found some Christmas lights and um, another buyer there said, hey, be sure you plug in all of your vintage Christmas lights before you check out. And I thought, wow, why didn't I think of that? Of course, these are used. These are some 50 to 70 years old. When plugging them in, I found like five sets that didn't work. I negotiated her to $4 for all of the non-working lights and I pulled the caps off of them because they were those little like starburst um, caps. I pulled those out of the non-working strand and I sold the lot of them. One lot I sold for $20 and two of those lots I sold for $15 a piece. So I was able to get around $50 for non-working Christmas lights just by separating those out, parting it out, and selling just the light covers as a lot. While I was comping out those Christmas lights so I could list them, I come across what's called the Wonder Star Christmas light cover. This dates back all the way to the 1930s. So we're talking 90 years old on these and they were by and large the most valuable Christmas lights or light covers that I came across on eBay. If you find these, be sure to pick them up. This set of Wonder Star lights sold for $995. This is what they look like all lit up. And now I will tell you that there were definitely sets that sold for less, um, but they did not show them working. They did not show them lit up. So if it, if it lights up, show it lit up somewhere in your listing show it working because when i saw the colors there i kind of want these i don't want them like a thousand dollars bad but i kind of want some like them here's an example of the same lights there are only two bulbs here sold for 202 dollars and 50 cents here is a lot of eight of them for 405 dollars 54 dollars for two non-working 600 dollars for another box of them again they are called the wonder star you might consider the key keyword estate when you're listing something like this. Estate for some, estate is always a good keyword when you're listing vintage. I'm sure you learned something during my list of Christmas bolos and I would really love to know what item it is that you didn't know about. I try to bring items that even a veteran reseller or collector maybe wouldn't know about, but I also never want to miss the opportunity
opportunity to educate newer resellers about some of these brands that many of us, again, veteran resellers may have already known about, but if no one ever tells you, you won't ever know. It's always my hope that a video like this could educate the newbie and the veteran reseller all at once. So comment below and let me know what you learned in this video. Thank you so much for watching. God bless. And as always, treat your business like your business.